Hey, y'all, and welcome back to the Katie on the Flip Side podcast. I'm excited to be doing another podcast with you guys today and talking about one of the things that has been one of the biggest questions, most frequently asked questions that I get, and that is how I've lost weight, how I, I mean, not how I, but what I eat in a day, what I've eaten, what exercises I've done, and all of that. So I wanted to address some of those questions and have a place that I can direct people when they ask me that question. Um, If you are not familiar with my journey, I have lost at this point since... Okay, so since like November, I think it was November 2nd last year, I changed my eating patterns completely. Um, I'd been exercising some before that. I'd tried a million times to lose weight before that. Um, I've been up and down since having two kids. But since November 2nd last year, I've lost about 35 pounds. Um, And I have not actually lost a bunch more weight since maybe the end of April. Um around May when summer started uh, with the kids, being out of school and traveling and everything, kind of gave myself a little bit of a pass, got a little bit more lenient, ate a few more carbs and a little bit more sugar. And um, luckily, I've like, I've kept up with my healthy eating. It's probably been 50-50. So like healthy eating 50% of the time. And then the rest of the time kind of just like letting it go a little bit. Um, We've been working on a lot of other personal development things in our lives and our marriage. So um, not that that's a good excuse, but that's kind of what's happened. Um, but I have maintained and I've been very aware of what I've eating, what I've been eating to maintain. Um, I do have about 20 more pounds that I would like to lose. So, um, that is my goal right now. Prior to November 2nd of last year, I had lost 20 pounds um, after having my kids. I'm one of those lucky people that gains weight while breastfeeding instead of losing weight. And now that I know what I know about diet and eating and nutrition, some of that possibly is due to my eating habits. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm going to be losing weight while eating whatever the heck I want, but um, my diet really wouldn't change a whole lot from when I was pregnant and when I was breastfeeding. And when I was breastfeeding, I wanted to eat so much more and had so many more cravings than when I was pregnant. It was insane. And I've heard other people say the same. Um, Some people's bodies hold on to fat when you're breastfeeding to kind of store it up and save it. Some people are like, breastfeeding was like my miracle weight loss drug after having babies. Not true for me. So um, the long story short to that is that after I quit um, nursing my youngest child about, you know, within a month after quitting nursing, um, well, I guess after cutting down from, you know, all day, every day to like just morning and night when he turned one, I lost about four, I mean, five pounds pretty quickly um, within the next, you know, month. And then once I stopped completely, um, not breastfeeding at all anymore, I lost another five pounds pretty quickly um, within a couple weeks. And then I was also taking an antidepressant at the time for postpartum depression, and when I quit taking that, I lost 10 pounds in about a month, um, a month or two probably, and that definitely affected my appetite, made me retain water, made me gain weight, and all of the bad things. Um, Nothing against antidepressants. You got to do what you got to do. And I would not have survived that year. That is a topic for a whole nother conversation that I believe I've had before somewhere (laughs) in my content. But we can talk about that too, if you guys want to later. But so I had already lost about 20 pounds from the say like June 2000. 17 up until November 2018. And then it was in November of 2018, almost a whole year ago when I changed my life and turned a lot of things around and started on my health journey. Um, and I will just say before I get started, I am going to tell you guys what I did, how I did it, what made the biggest change for me. And um, it was definitely a change in eating, but it was uh, and is 100% doable, which is why it has stuck. The other reason why it's stuck 
is because of the reason that I did it. So I can sit here all day and tell you what to do, tell you how I've done it. Um, I mean, I could give you like a legitimate complete eating plan. That doesn't mean for one that you'll follow through with it. That doesn't mean that you'll have the mental energy to do it, the motivation to do it. That doesn't mean that you will stick to it and keep the weight off. It takes a mental shift to lose a good bit of weight. It takes an even bigger mental shift to continue losing weight, to not give up, and to be able to make it through holidays and birthday parties and summer and all of that and continue to lose weight or decide to maintain your weight during that time period. When I started my weight loss journey, it was November 2nd, like right before the two biggest holidays where you eat the most food, you bake all the Christmas cookies, you eat all the sweets with your kids. Um, Thanksgiving, obviously, just all like Halloween had just happened. So I did eat all the Halloween candy, but there was still Halloween candy in our house. So when you make that mental shift, it is just incredible what can happen. And I can tell you too, that not starting until you are mentally ready um, is important. I don't, I don't want to say like, hold off and don't try to start losing weight or getting healthier. I literally just start like just seriously, just start today. Don't hold yourself off. Don't tell yourself you're going to do it tomorrow. But I know there were times in my life when I went to the doctor um, after having my second child and started talking about my emotions and that I was experiencing postpartum depression. And then I talked about how my weight was out of control and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And he told me, I want you to get your depression and your mental state under control first. This was my medical doctor, my gynecologist. He said, your your weight is gonna you'll resolve that like you you will be able to get that under control but you won't be able to until you get your mind right and as much as I remember telling that to somebody and they were like oh well, if he told me that that just give me a pass and I'd just go eat all the things but it it didn't it made me feel so like I guess respected and appreciated and the fact that he appreciated the fact that I was in such a hard place that it was almost more mentally damaging for somebody to tell me, well, if you just work out, if you just eat better, if you, you know, I, I, that wasn't even in my brain at that time. I had too many other things to deal with. So I will say getting your mind right first is important, um, whether that means counseling, therapy, whether that means reading some books to get you your mindset shift. Um, I know that I started reading, I listened to Rachel Hollis's book, Girl, Wash Your Face, in August of last year. And after that, started listening to books that she recommended and the other people recommended, um, The Power of Habit. Is that what it's called? Yeah, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, um, High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. I got into the codependency um, books and all of that, trying to figure out kind of my life. And then once I realized that I could have control over my life, that I could be the one to change things, that I was the only one responsible for changing it, and that I could do that whether else whether nobody else around me did or not. That's when I was able to go, you know what, maybe I'm just going to start a little bit at a time. I'm going to start walking. I'm going to get up in the morning, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour earlier than I usually do, go out, walk. No pressure on myself to like run a marathon the first day, but I said I'm going to walk for 30 minutes. And that's always how I start personally when I get back into trying to get myself healthy again, get back motivated. Um, This summer, I didn't exercise a whole lot because we were getting our house ready to sell. So I was kind of exercising, doing that, um, running around, doing house projects, packing and all that. Um, But once school started back, I was like, okay, this is how I'm going to get myself motivated to start back. So go out. 30 minutes, walk, you know, whatever you can. And as I would do it every day, every other day, I would kind of speed up a little bit, you know, and I would start to want to go faster. I'd be able to go faster. And so that's kind of how I get myself motivated. Um, So I'd started doing that in probably September of last year. And then I listened to Kelly Levesque's book, Body Love. 
So this is like a huge important part of my weight loss journey. And this is what totally changed my mindset and changed everything that I knew about nutrition and eating and the ability to lose weight, to maintain weight, to keep weight off, to stick with um, healthy eating. The book, again, is Body Love by Kelly Levesque. It is amazing. Um, You can listen to it on Audible. You can buy a hard copy. I listened to it on Audible while I was walking in the mornings. And it was a Friday morning that I listened to, I think I was probably only halfway through the book. But at that point, I knew enough that I was like, you know what? I'm doing this. I am tired of feeling like crap. I am tired of being exhausted all the time. And I just said, I'm doing it. It was a Friday. We had, Cullen and I had a date planned that night. And I said, I'm just going to go for it. And I started a lifestyle change, a diet, a healthier eating plan on a Friday. And it stuck. And that's when you know that your mindset is so right that you don't start making excuses of why you want to eat bad. Um, You just go for it. So I think for me, um, going back to the mental shift, What is the most important to get you started is a why. And I can't tell you how many millions of times I've heard this. Um, And I'm going to talk to you guys about it first before I tell you what I did. Because like I said, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what I did. And then you say, oh, well, I tried that for a couple days and it didn't work because your mind wasn't right. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've kind of explained this to or told different parts of it to. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I could do that. Listen to what I'm saying about the why. Let me tell you why things never worked for me before. Um, I tried counting calories. I tried, you know, I would cut carbs. I would cut this and that because I wanted to lose weight, because I wanted to be skinnier. I wanted to fit in my pants. I wanted my husband to think I looked good. I wanted to, you know, quote, feel good, feel better. Well, when you start a diet where you're counting calories or you're trying to just limit your unhealthy foods, it, whew, it's rough. It's hard. You're starving. I was hungry all the time. I remember before I listened to this book, I said, I want to know, because I had tried, I was like, okay, I'm going to have a lean pocket for lunch and I'm going to have, you know, a Nutri-Grain bar for breakfast and maybe some eggs or something, some protein, something healthy. And I would be starving after an hour and a half, after two hours. And I was like, how in the world? Like, I hate being hungry. It's one of my, like, I hate Feeling like I can't stay awake. That's one of my biggest things that I just like it. Oh, I hate it. And I hate being hungry. Like I hate feeling like I'm going (laughs) to die of hunger or something crazy. I have no idea why. But like I have a fear of being hungry. I always have like a snack of something in my purse just in case I get stranded somewhere and I'm hungry. That's my Enneagram 6 in me, by the way. (laughs) Planning ahead for that. Um, Stranded on the side of the road thing. But um. So my main holdup, I felt like, was that I was like, I would love to lose weight. I would love to eat better. But I'm so freaking tired of just being hungry when I try to, like, cut calories. Um, Especially when I would exercise, I would be even more hungry. So listening to Kelly Levesque's book, I learned a whole different way to not be hungry. Um, I learned why I felt sluggish and why I felt tired, why I was hungry all the time, and why the weight loss options that I had tried before did not work. Um... And I'm going to explain all that to you. But it was interesting because I have like notes in my phone that I'd written down about this podcast and what I wanted to say. And I had all this written um, like a little couple bullet points about a why, like why the, the why and how that's so important. Um, and then this morning on Rachel and Dave Hollis's uh, podcast, uh, not podcast, it is a podcast too, but it's a morning show. They do a live morning show every morning, Monday through Friday. And then it's also in podcast form. Um, It's called the Start Today Morning Show, if you're looking for it in podcast form. Um, He started talking about how to change your life. You need a why that is bigger than your excuses to keep you going on the days that are hard. And I was like, man, that's exactly like along the lines of what I'm going to talk about. Um, But it made me think about, too, a long-term why versus a short-term why. So um, Dave Hollis was talking about how a big why, like a a why that's bigger than his excuses. You know, he thinks about 60 years down the road when his kids are sitting around the table toasting him at his 60th birthday. What are they going to say about him? You know, the the changes he's made in his life. Is he going to be healthy? Is he even going to be there because of the life changes and becoming more healthy and not allowing himself to 
um, decline in health. So that's great and all. That's a really great why. But I think that's where I've gotten held up before when people have talked about, oh, you have to know your why and my kids are my why because I would do anything for them and I want them to see that I'm strong and that I can change my life and that I eat healthy. And okay, that for me, yes, that's a good long term and a big why. But it was just honestly never enough to keep me motivated. When it was a long-term thing like that, it was so much easier for me to just be like, well, okay, that's fine. After the holidays, you know, I'll get back in shape. And my kids are only three and five. It's fine. They'll, you know, next year I'll start. That was just hard. So for me, I needed to have a short-term immediate reward why. And for me, that was that I realized once I listened to Kelly Levesque's book, and she's she explains it way better than anything I'm going to say today. Um, so you might want to listen to it uh, or read it. She explains about how food is intended to give you fuel and make you feel better. I had never understood that. Like I knew that. I knew people said that. And I was like, well, dadgum, I'm eating green beans and my low calorie shake and, you know, getting a Diet Coke instead of a regular Coke. And I still don't feel great and energized. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, So once I understood it and changed it and realized how much better I felt when I wasn't hungry, when I was eating things that fed my body, I realized that that was a that was the thing that kept me going because I was like, I know that if I eat like crap today or tonight, I'm going to feel like crap. I know that if I eat a big, huge carb filled lunch, I'm going to want to crash and I'm not going to want to finish working and I'm going to want to take a nap and then I'm going to lose motivation and then I'm going to feel bad about myself and the cycle continues. Um, So we even went to Disney World in the middle of me losing weight and I was able to, I was so worried about it because I was like, I'm going to want to eat all the bad foods. But I literally was like, I can't eat all the sugar because I want to enjoy this vacation, and I know that I feel my best. I'm not sluggish. I'm not tired. I'm not irritable when I eat right, and I know that I feel better. And I just, if you had told me this a year ago, I would have, like, probably kind of snickered and been like, okay, yeah, whatever. That's what the healthy people say. Like, oh, you feel so much better. And I never felt better when I was dieting. So um, anyways, you you have to find what's going to motivate you and give you a, quote, reward in the short term. The bigger whys are great, but you need to quote kind of indirectly, I don't know the direct quote of what Dave said this morning, you need a why that is bigger than your excuses. And it's That is what will keep you going when it's hard. That's what kept me going when I would want to eat the Mickey waffles and the sprinkle chocolate coated donuts and all of that because the why of not having a sugar crash in an hour was bigger and more important to me than me enjoying a donut. I wanted to enjoy Disney World with my kids and not be tired more than I wanted to eat that donut because that donut would be gone in 30 seconds and my memories of Disney World with my kids would last forever. So that was super important to me. So here we go. (laughs) Um, Think about the things that are your why, that are your short-term why. And usually it's it's motivating to think about other people and being an inspiration for other people and, you know, helping your kids and all that. But think about the things about yourself that you don't like um, feeling. It's hard for you to get up off the floor when you're playing with your kids. It's hard for you to get down on the floor. You're exhausted all the time. You're irritable. You're always hungry. You feel sluggish. All of those things are important motivators. Um, And as I would go on this journey of changing my eating and changing my health, failing a couple times and falling off the wagon or eating the sugar in the middle of the day, having a donut for breakfast instead of my protein shake, And realizing how crappy I felt a couple hours later was motivator enough for me to realize like, oh, crap, this ain't no joke. This is for serious. (laughs) So um, that is kind of my rant on how you need to you need to know why and you have to be motivated. You have to have something that you can fall back on when you want it when you're wanting to eat, quote, bad. Um, Okay, so let's just kind of get into this. 
you're wanting to feed your body. You're wanting to give your body fuel. If you're having an issue with respecting your body and loving your body, that's going to hold you back. Um, my previous podcast, episode seven, uh, talks about loving your body and having trouble with self-love, having trouble with body image. If you are struggling with that, you're going to continue to struggle with weight loss until you love your body and love yourself. It's going to be a struggle and you, you are going to have trouble not giving up on yourself. Um, so I would encourage you to listen to that podcast to get some perspective if you need that in that area. Um, but once I loved my body, uh, which I'm still working on, but once I was realized that I was the one in charge of maintaining my body, keeping myself healthy, and I was the only one responsible for the fact that I felt like crap, I listened to what Kelly Levesque said about how your blood sugar works. And again, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to explain this as well as she does. She has all this training in all of these experiences with this stuff. So let me just kind of tell you my super dumbed down, simplified common folk version is that when you eat carbs or sugar, your body, see, I'm going to say the wrong thing. It does something with insulin. Y'all probably everybody in the world knows this. And right now I'm blanking on your body like makes more insulin or it's something about it, whatever it does, your body deals with the sugar in a way that it deals with it. So carbs like bread are sugar. Sugar like a cupcake is also sugar. When you think of sugar, you think of a cupcake, candy, all that kind of stuff. The example that she gave that made me go, oh crap, (laughs) is when she said your body processes the sugar in quinoa The same way that it processes the sugar in a cupcake, I was like, are you kidding me? So basically, I'm sitting here going, oh, I'm going to eat this quinoa because I've heard that that's healthy and that's good for you because it has protein in it, right? It's it's better than eating pasta, which sure, I'm sure it is. Um, It has this protein in it and it's better than a cupcake. So in order for your body to process that protein and absorb the protein or whatever it does. I'm telling you very unscientific here. Please do not like quote me on this. But before it processes or does what it's supposed to do with the protein and your body's able to use the protein, it has to process the sugar and the carbs. So y'all again, eating a cup of quinoa is the same as eating a cupcake, basically, if you're thinking about how your body reacts to it. Um, Of course, you're not getting the same type of sugar. You're getting different complex versus simple carbs and all the stuff. But regardless, your body doesn't know the difference. It processes this stuff the same. And that gave me a whole different perspective on carbs because when I say I was a noodle-aholic, I literally mean I had noodles for dinner just about every night. Um, and oftentimes for lunch and had a carby breakfast. So when I realized this, then she explains what happens when your body has sugar. Um, And I mean, if you've ever eaten candy or sugar, whatever, you may notice, which I personally didn't really understand this, probably because I just ate so much sugar all the time that it wasn't that obvious. Um, But you'll have a sugar crash. So your body will be processing the sugar. It'll do its thing with insulin. I sound really dumb right now, not knowing exactly what that is, but, um, then you will feel tired and you will crash and your body will have spent so much of its work dealing with that, that you're hungry again. Um, so even when you're eating like a lean pocket, or something, which I used to all often, always buy at the store, often had for lunch. They were almost always in our refrigerator or freezer. Um, you're not getting the other things that your body needs to keep you full and to like feed your organs, feed your brain, feed your muscles, and give you energy, which is protein, fat, fiber, and greens. So she basically talks about how for every meal, in order to feed your body in order to keep yourself full and in order to have energy you need protein fat fiber and greens at every meal and I'm sure you could get super specific about quantities and she does in her book she does describe a lot of things 
And as I was starting out um, with changing my lifestyle, I lived a lot more by the book and was pretty particular about making sure there weren't carbs or sugar. Um, I also followed several different Instagram accounts of different weight loss folks, people that were inspiring to me, um, who shared about their food, who shared about their weight loss journey and how they had done what they had done. Um, and from that, I kind of picked and chose what worked for me in different areas of eating. And I tried to be aware of my carbs. Um, ideally, if I could make it without eating any carbs in a day, that'd be great. But that really wasn't realistic for me um, at the time. And it wasn't totally necessary for me. And um, Kelly Levesque talks about in her book how carbs, it's not that carbs are horrible. It's just that you don't need a whole ton of them. They should be a very, very small portion of your meal. And so I would generally, my kind of guideline in my head, rough guideline, I have not counted particularly things, counted calories, counted carbs necessarily. I'd kind of keep a rough running total in my head, but it was not so specific that if I was like one carb over or under or whatever, that I would just not eat whatever it was. You know, I would try to just be mindful of it. Um, But my rough goal was to keep it under 20 carbs a day. Um, So if you're looking at nutrition facts on a box of something, you're going to see carbs and underneath it, it's going to say the amount of dietary fiber. So to get the net carbs, you will subtract the fiber from the carb number. So say, for example, something says it has seven grams of carbs and it has three dietary fibers. So that counts for four carbs, four grams of carbs that you would count towards your total for the day. Um, And again, like I said, I didn't write this down anywhere. I didn't count them specifically. I just kind of kept track of like, you know, if it's 20 is my max per day, well, then I'm, you know, going to try to stay four or five, maybe seven per meal um, is would be good. So not that I wanted to achieve that number, but that like if I wanted to have, say I wanted to have some ketchup on my, what did I have today? I had it. This is really random, y'all. If you saw my Instagram story, I like to eat a cheeseburger sandwich, I mean salad. Um, So I'll get like cheeseburger meat and then I'll put it on a salad. But sometimes I'll like to coat it with a little bit of ketchup to give me the flavor and the feel of a burger. So I'll look at the carbs and the sugars and all that and make sure that I'm not going to go over. So it's not like I'm going to look at, you know, some noodles or something. Um, But so I tried to stay under the 20 grams of carbs a day. And then I would make sure, and I still do for the majority of my meals, make sure I have a protein, which usually is meat. So like, um, I think the amount she gives is kind of different for men and women, maybe six to eight ounces, something like that of a protein. And again, I never measured or weighed or whatever my chicken, I would have a chicken breast and I would eat however much I needed to fill me up. Um, So I would have chicken or sometimes we do pork. Um, I would make sure that I had like, I do red meat. Now, if you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not into that. I like to eat meat. So um, I'm sure you know other ways to get protein though, but just kind of keeping track of your protein and letting that be the biggest kind of portion as far as the number goes. So that kind of sounds weird. It's different in my head than what just came out of my mouth. But when you're looking at like grams of protein versus grams of fat, I mean, grams of um, carbs, you're going to want way more grams of protein. So um, I think there may have even been a number like, I don't even want to quote anything because I'm going to be wrong, but a certain number of grams of protein that it's ideal to eat every day. Um, But there's not a limit on it. So for carbs, you it's a it's a limit, not a goal. So you want to not eat more than 20 carbs or however many you decide works for you. But it's not that you have to eat 20 carbs in a day. Um, you could eat none in a day and that would be even better. Um, but you're, you kind of put a limit on it. For the protein, there's no limit. Like eat as much protein as you want, but you want to have a goal of getting at least a certain amount of protein in your diet. And I wish I could tell you what it was, but I never counted specifically enough to uh, make sure I did. 
but I would modify recipes that I enjoyed to make sure. So for example, spaghetti is something that I love and fix at least once a week. I would make sure that obviously the spaghetti has like ground beef in it or meatballs or whatever else. Um, I never made my own meatballs. So I would look for meatballs at the store in the frozen section and I would check the back of them. Some of them have more carbs than others because some include like some, um, you know, breadcrumbs or whatever, ever other fillers they put in there. Um, so meat, I would put that in there. Um, I was very aware of the spaghetti sauce and how many carbs that had in it because tomatoes do have sugar in them. Um, but everything else for the spaghetti other than the noodles was fine. Um, I'd keep an eye on those carbs uh, for the spaghetti sauce, whatever type I used. Usually I would just use canned tomato sauce and it would end up working out okay. Um, For the noodles, I would do spaghetti squash or zucchini noodles, which sounds disgusting if you've never had it before and if you're a big noodle person. But when you've been going without carbs, it's honestly does not taste bad at all. It tastes, it's like normal tasting because you don't, I mean, you don't crave that stuff anymore. But so I would have my protein mixed in with my food Um, for the fat. um, I want to say she gives a specific amount. Maybe she doesn't give a specific amount of fat. I use this as rough guidelines because for me, that's how it's easier for me to stick to it. If I feel like I'm restricted by not being able to go over a certain number, having to achieve a certain number, that stresses me out. I have two small kids. We have activities. We have stuff to do. Some weeks I don't get to the grocery store. Like I just, I have to make it work. And that's the best thing about her book is that she talks about how to make it work in different situations, how to make it work when you go out to eat. Um, We had Taco Bell some nights and I searched um, low carb Taco Bell options and then would kind of assess what all's in there. And you can put anything into the internet and say like how much, how many carbs, fat, protein, you know, what's the nutrition facts for corn? What's the nutrition facts for black beans? And you can kind of look at it and get an idea. And once you know those things, you are able to more easily just kind of look at a menu and decide. So, you know, once I've looked at, dang, corn has more carbs in it than I thought it did. Probably not good to get that. So I'm going to get the, you know, the protein bowl from Taco Bell and I'm going to ask him to leave out the corn and the beans and the cheese. And it's still going to be good, but I can all, I can get the guacamole because that's okay. Um, So it's incredibly flexible and, you know, as much as it's scary to some people, some people like to track and count and whatever, and that's great. If you do, then you probably do even better at this. But for me, this is what worked. So um, the fat would be sometimes nuts. Um, I almost always add almonds or walnuts or pistachios or some other type of nut to my meals. Um... And it really mixes in well with stuff. If you're used to having chips or crackers, like I'll make tuna salad sometimes and I'm used to dipping that in crackers. But if instead I put some celery in there and I put some almonds, it gives it the crunch that kind of like replicates as if I was eating it on a cracker. So you kind of make modifications like that. So for the fat, like I said, I would do um, some nuts. Um, If I'm cooking something in a skillet like spaghetti, I would make sure and cook it with coconut oil or I would cook it with, I would add pesto, like a basil pesto sauce, because that adds in some greens, um, the basil and the pesto, and it does have fat in it as well. I would cook with olive oil. So like just making sure to add fats in with your meal. Um, I've always been afraid of fats and fats are not bad for you. Uh, She explains in the in the book, how important fat is actually to your brain and for your brain functioning and for your like mental clarity and understanding that all made me go, Oh my gosh, this is important. Like I understand. Cause I would hear, here's a great thing that you need to put in your food. Like make sure you're putting fat in your food. And I thought, well, I mean, so what if I'm not, you know, if I'm not, then I'm saving on calories and I'm going to lose weight easier, but you don't realize that that's kind of, that's what keeps you full is the protein and the fat. That's what helps your brain function better. That's what helps your muscles function better. That's what makes you not so sluggish and not so tired and irritable. Um, the irritability for me was the post sugar, like the crash of sugar. And that's what leaves you reaching for another something, another cookie, another carby sugary snack. Um, 
So there's lots of different options in her book where she talks about different types of fat and things to put in your meals. So fat, fiber, um, or protein fiber um, comes in the form of greens. Any green vegetable usually has fiber in it. I will sometimes add flax seed or chia seeds. There's different types of fiber that you can make sure is in there. Uh, I'm not going to give a whole list because I am not the expert on that, but vegetables in general tend to have fiber. Just be aware of the ones. Like I didn't realize carrots actually have more carbs in them than I thought. Um, It's not like you're eating a bowl of noodles, but I want to say a large carrot or a carrot maybe has like seven carbs or something, which when you're going for 20 in a day, 70 to carrot, I'm like, well, dang, I can do without that carrot (laughs) and I can eat a different vegetable that's not as carby. Um, So fat, fiber, protein, and greens. So greens, usually for me for lunch, I almost always have a salad. I buy a big plastic tub at the store of the mixed greens. So you want darker greens, not the lighter greens. I used to do iceberg lettuce salads all the time because I like it. I like the crunch. I like how it tastes. Um, But Adding in the darker greens was really important. Um, It's been a while, actually. I feel like there's so many things I'm working on in my life. I'll go through a period of time where I'm like, oh, shoot, I used to put kale on my salad every day. And now I don't anymore because I just totally forgot about buying that stuff. But kale is a great option. Um, It can also be, for so with your dinner, the zucchini noodles would count as your green. Or you could make zucchini, saute some zucchini, some broccoli, even on the nights when... I don't have time to make myself a fancy dinner and the kids are going to have chicken nuggets and mac and cheese and broccoli because they'll eat broccoli. I will eat some steamed broccoli with them. Sometimes I'll let myself have some chicken nuggets. I wouldn't have done that in the beginning because they're not as healthy. They're, you know, they have more carbs because of the breading and all that. But I would just skillet, fry me up, not fry, but I would skillet, cook me up some um, chicken, put lots of seasonings on it and it'd be delicious. And I would have my broccoli with it. I would have some almonds with it. And for me, I would cook it in the olive oil, add some basil pesto or whatever. And for me, that would be like my quick and easy, not fancy at all, but let's just get it done and eat something that I know is going to keep me full. I know is going to leave me not craving dessert and I know is going to make me feel better tomorrow. That was my quick and easy option. Um, So making sure the fat, fiber, and greens were in every meal was huge. Kelly um, Levesque in her book talks about her green smoothies, her breakfast smoothies, which is her big claim to fame, her Fab Four smoothies. So that's what she calls the fat, fiber, proteins, and green is the Fab Four that you need in every meal. And her Fab Four smoothies are a way to eat a quick and easy breakfast with all those things in it without having to stress out over cooking something because throwing a bunch of stuff in a smoothie when you've all got it pre-prepared and sitting there ready to go is definitely easy and keeps you full for longer than you think. So she has lots of recipes in her book. Um, I have a YouTube video on what I put in my Fab Four smoothie. I also have a YouTube video on what I eat in a day and what I was eating in a day while I was like super actively following a more strict um, diet plan. And I can include a link to that in the description of this podcast. But um, basically, it's almond milk, almond butter, a protein powder, some spinach that I promise you don't taste in a smoothie at all, Um, and then some flax seeds. I'm trying to think what else. The fat, the fiber, the protein, the greens. I think that covered it all. And then sometimes I'll put a little MCT oil in there as well, which helps with um, a lot of different things. There's a lot of different things that stuff helps with. Um, So that would be breakfast. And her thing is if you're really having a hard time eating better, start with a Fab Four smoothie. Don't tell yourself you got to change your whole eating immediately. Start with a Fab Four smoothie for a week just for breakfast. Replace your bagel or your cereal or your oatmeal or whatever you're eating with that and see what happens. And I think I lost like three or four pounds in the week just changing my breakfast. And then once I added in the other stuff, I had lost 12 pounds in the first three weeks, I think, three weeks or a month, and had lost almost 20 pounds in two months. I think it was 17 pounds in two months. Um, And then just continued to lose after that. So it's definitely 
a beneficial eating pattern. Um, she gives different options for like when you go out of town with your girlfriends and you want to just let loose and eat whatever you want to eat. Here's what you do. Here's how you go to a restaurant and um, get something that sticks within the guidelines of that. Here's what you do if you're going to a tailgate party where you know it's going to be all fried foods. You, One of her main things is planning ahead and eating beforehand with the f- protein, fat, fiber, and greens. Maybe it's not time for dinner, but maybe you can make you half of a Fab Four smoothie and she calls that a roadie (laughs) and take it on the road because when your body is fulfilled with all of those different categories of food that it needs, you're not going to crave the other foods. You're not going to be hungry and knowing what you know and getting your body used to being fed appropriately, you will be able to resist those other foods better. Or for me, I am one of those people who can have a taste or two and then be done and be like, okay, I I got my fill. Like, I feel like I just need to taste it and know what it tastes like. For some people, that doesn't work. For some people, once you taste it, you're going to eat the whole thing. Um, that goes for me too with uh, being able to keep like candy and cookies and stuff in the house. The first month that I changed my eating I did not eat candy or cookies. I told myself for 30 days, for the whole first month, first four weeks, I was going to stick strictly to it. Um, I even cut out most fruit for my dessert after dinner. I would have like four blueberries. And honestly, those were the most delicious blueberries ever. Because when you're not eating sugar, sugar tastes so much sweeter. Like fruit tastes like candy to me now because I don't eat as much sugar. And that sounds crazy, but... Honestly, the first four days were probably the hardest, cutting out all the sugary, carby stuff that I eat. And then after that, I didn't really care. Like the first couple of days, I would look in the pantry and, you know, we still had all the kids like muffins and Pop-Tarts and all this stuff. And I would be like, oh my gosh, I just want to eat one of those so bad. After about four days, once you stop eating sugar and you go through a little bit of a withdrawal, you get a little grumpy, you get a little irritable. But then once you get over that hump after those first few days... You literally, I I didn't care. I was like, this is fine. I see Pop-Tarts. I don't want a Pop-Tart right now. I wouldn't even think about it. And one of um, Kelly Levesque's thing in her book too is people writing her after they've tried this and been like, oh my gosh, I used to spend my whole day thinking about food and thinking what I was going to eat next. And now food doesn't run my day. I run my day. Like I don't spend my whole day thinking about how I can't wait to eat lunch and where we're going to go and how much Oh, how delicious it's going to be because it's when your body is fulfilled and she talks a lot about eating to satiety. So eating until you are pleasantly like satisfied, not under eating and not overeating, but eating till you're satisfied, your body will tell you what to do and it will kind of give you the signals. And once you're doing that, you just, you don't crave stuff like it's sugar that causes the sugar cravings. So when you don't have all the sugar in your diet, you don't crave that stuff. So this has been long, I know, and I know it's been a lot of information for those of you who are still here and have made it this far. Props to you. Um, I hope some of this has been helpful to you. I feel like there's probably a lot of stuff, even as much as I've talked about that I haven't covered. Um, I do have lots of different recipes and modifications to things that I like to eat on the regular that I could share with you guys and would love to do that. Um, If you do get Kelly Levesque's book, if you get the Audible version, you get also like a free Kindle version, which I thought Kindle was only something you could read like on a Kindle, the little actual device. But there's a Kindle app that you can get on your phone. And so you can have everything there. And it has lots of good recipes in it um, for like regular good delicious food that fits within the Fab Four. It's a great book. It really, really, it changes your mindset. Like it's not just a book about what to eat. It's a book about how to get control of your health and your weight and your eating and how to feel better. When I when I got done listening to the book, I was like, gum, is this hypnosis or something? Because I literally could care less if I eat something bad right now. Like this is crazy. So definitely beneficial. Listen to it. Um, read the book. Follow her on Instagram. Find some inspirational weight loss people on Instagram um, that are within 
the like realm of what you want to eat, I would say that when when I was searching for recipes of like how to fit things into Fab Four, because I love me some Pinterest, I would search like say I wanted broccoli and cheese soup or something. I would search keto broccoli and cheese soup or paleo broccoli and cheese soup. And the way of eating that she describes is not exactly keto. It's not exactly paleo. It's kind of its own thing, but it can fit within those the realm of those um, areas. So you can usually kind of modify things. But anyways, I will let you guys go for now. Um, Please feel free to connect with me on Instagram. It's where I am most of the time. My Instagram name is katiepie07. You can find me over there. Send me a message, comment on one of my posts. If you have questions or things you would like me to address in the podcast um, related to weight loss or related to anything else, I would love to hear it. Thank you guys so much. And as always, it's super helpful for me. If you will rate my podcast, give it however many stars you think it deserves and a review that really helps get it out there and helps other people to find out about it. Share it with your friends. If you know somebody who's struggling with their weight or who has struggled with weight loss, um, is definitely something that would be beneficial to share. I would love it and would feel so honored if you would share it with your friends or your family or whoever. Thank you guys so much for listening and I will talk to you later. Bye.